Here we go. First, before we, before we begin, on the weekend I came across a great video, and I think it works into forces here. I'll show it to you, and then we're going to try and talk about what's going on with actual forces in this video. And I'm not quite sure, in fact, I may even end up posting this onto the physics teacher's news group for some feedback. Uh, did I put it here? I think I put it, I think I put it here, Mr. Book. Let's see, arranged by date modified. There it is. A company claims that they have invented a machine that can clean up spills in a very remarkable manner. Watch this, it's from Japan. This, this is bordering to me on witchcraft almost. I'm like, okay. This is the machine. That's some mustard. Ketchup. Oh, it gets better. Let's start smooshing some of this around. Let's make sure it's actually liquid. So there's your standard spatula, which just smears it. Wow. I've tried to figure out what's going on there because it's clearly applying a force in one direction and there should be friction in another direction. I, I, I'm really not quite sure what's going on here. I got to sit and really think about this free body diagram because what should that ketchup be doing? It should be smearing in the direction that that thing is pushing, should it not? That's what ketchup is always, or spills have always done for me, yet somehow this isn't. Good morning, sir. How are you doing, sir? Did we just see a pretty cool video? Was it actually almost blowing your mind cool? Oh, it would be sure neat if someone else had seen that video. Feeling lucky? What we got? Unless you have an excuse. Oh, I won't even ask. What are we at? Four! Okay. You have to pick it up first. Yeah, there you go. Good pass. Don't hit the projector. Thank you. And, uh... Gosh, I can't have misplaced them that fast. Here you go, Dylan. Oh, how'd that happen? I don't, I don't get the that video. I don't get the free body diagram because again, I'm going if it if that machine is pushing to the what direction what, uh, to the right or to the left, there has to be a force going to the right. But friction, but huh? Because it almost looks like that was frictionless. It almost looked like it slid smoothly right underneath it, and that, that liquid, that smear, whatever it was, the ketchup, 
almost looked like it had no longer had any friction. I'm wondering maybe if that platform, that little machine, is vibrating really, 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 really fast so that the ketchup almost stays like on a cushion of air almost. Or I don't know. But it is pretty cool. Meanwhile, to today's lesson. Many body problems, more than one mass. In these problems, we have several objects connected get together by strings. And the easy approach is to realize that we can treat the entire system as a single object since all the parts are accelerating at the same rate. What I'm going to say to you is if objects are connected with strings, there's no way that I can make these accelerate at different rates, the bottom mass and the top mass. The string means, unless I put slack in it, and Devin, we're not going to put slack in it, yucky math then, as long as I'm moving nice and smoothly, the direction of the acceleration is different. But if this is accelerating at 2 meters per second to your right, this is accelerating, uh, meters per second squared, sorry, this is accelerating up at 2 meters per second squared. I can't have them accelerate at different rates. That's the first logical conclusion we're going to reach. So, example one says, find the acceleration and then also find the tension between the strings right there. And we're going to start out with no friction, our frictionless surface. What's the solution? We're going to treat this system as a single object and write a force equation. What we're going to do is we're going to walk along this string and we're going to list all of the forces. I'm going to start out with this 2 kilogram mass and I'm going to say, what are the forces acting on this 2 kilogram mass? Get the obvious ones. Gravity. What else? Normal force up. What else? Well, I'm just going to put an arrow here reminding me that there's a 20 newtons. So I'm not doing a separate free body diagram. I'm actually just labeling the forces on this lovely diagram that they gave me. I haven't represented the forces as a dot. I'm doing kind of a easier, sloppier free body diagram for convenience. What else? Well, there is one more. As it turns out, there is tension in that direction because it's having to pull this mass and so it feels resistance from this mass on this string. What are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious ones. Now, because I have two masses, I'm going to call this M1G, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to call this M2G. And my standard, Alexis, is I always label the masses from left to right. The first one is mass 1, the second one is mass 2, the third one is math th mass 3, starting from left to right. You don't have to go in that order. I'm just going to say that's the way I'll do it if you want your work to look like mine. But we are going to have to label the masses as separate. What else? Sorry, I heard it. Normal force, because it's not sinking into the ground. Oh, and you know what? Since I have two normal forces, I'll call this normal force number 1 and normal force number 2 because they're different. What else? Tension. The string is pulling it forward, not the 20 newtons. It doesn't know about that 20 newtons applied force. All it knows is this string is causing me to accelerate forwards. And here's the nice thing. Use your imagination, think a little bit. If I have a piece of string, is it possible for me to have a different tension over here than I have over here? I don't think it is. I think, Sean, that if I'm pulling on the string, I think both those tensions have to be identical. I can't put somehow, magically, more tension from one end than the other end, because forces come in pairs. The tension's going to be the same in both. Okay? So there's our free body, I'll call it a free body diagram. There's our labeled forces. To find the acceleration, we're going to first of all ask ourselves, who's winning? Who is winning, if anyone? Which way do you think this thing is accelerating? To the right? So who's the winning force? Okay, we're going to go winner minus loser, but we're going to walk down the entire string, the entire 
rope. Starting here. Winner. That means anything to the right, Cody, is going to be winner. Anything to the left is going to be losers. So uh, these are vertical. I don't care about those guys. I'm walking down the rope. Winner or loser? Loser, negative. Winner or loser? Positive. Hey, Alex, what's going to happen to the tensions? See it? Alexis, I said Alex. Alexis, what's going to happen to the tensions? They're going to cancel. Oh, I love it when I lose tension. It's so relaxing. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, we've come to the end of the rope. Now, the only difference here, Jacob, is instead of writing M-A, you know what? We're moving two masses. It's the mass of both of them times A. That's the only difference. Now, remember what I said? We're going to treat the system as a single object. We're treating it as one big mass. Tension cancels. So we have this. 20 equals. And M both, I think that's M1 plus M2 times A. Let's find the acceleration. How would I get the A by itself? going to move that whole bracket to the bottom of the 20. <coughs> the acceleration is going to be 20 divided by m1 plus m2. It's going to be 20 divided by five. Don't reach. Don't reach for your calculator. Dylan, in your head, what is 20 divided by 5? 4. You don't need your calculator for this one. Uh, how many sig figs? It looks like uh, 2 sig figs here. Because the 20 has a decimal. 2 sig figs. 2 sig figs. So I'm going to go 4.0 meters per second squared. That's the only twist we're going to add. If we have more than one mass, we're going to label all of the forces and they're going to walk down the entire chain, listing all the masses, winners and losers, depending on what the winner is. But it's going to be the mass of both times A. Or if there's three masses, the mass of all three times A. Or if there's four, which you're never going to get, but if there was four. Um, you know what? I could say the mass of all of them times A. That's it. Now I'd like to find the tension. Because it said, find the acceleration. Check. Find the tension. To find the tension, we look at a single mass. I'm either going to look at this mass or I'm going to look at this mass. And I think I'm going to choose this mass because it's got less stuff on it. Both are fine. You'll get the, same, the right answer for both. But this one here, Dylan, a little cleaner. So... I'm going to scroll down. You guys still have this diagram in front of you, yes? So I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to say, okay, just looking at this mass only, who's winning? Cassidy, tension. Who's losing on that mass? It's a trick question. Nothing. What about that 20? That 20 is not touching that mass. That 20 is not touching this mass. So tension, that's the winner, no loser, equals, are we looking at both masses or just one mass this time? So it's going to be M1A. Now they're asking me to find the tension. Do I know mass one? Did I just figure out the acceleration by looking at both? In fact, that's going to be our strategy, our plan of attack. We find the acceleration by looking at the whole system, and then we can find any individual force by looking at any mass that has that individual force. Uh, what was mass one? Three. What was A? Four. Dylan, in your head, showing no work. Woohoo! Is that two sig figs? Yep. Units. We just found a force because tension is a force. Newtons.
Hey, Mr. Duick, what if I hadn't used the three kilograms? What if instead I'd used this one, the two kilogram? No problem. You all still have the diagram? On the two kilogram mass, who was winning? 20. Who was losing? There is a force on the two kilogram mass pointing to the left. Which one? Minus tension equals, and now we're looking at mass two, so it would be M2A. Let's get the tension by itself. I think to do that, Devin, I would plus the tension over here, and I would minus this over there. Is that okay? Can I do that in one step? Oh, thank goodness you guys are so much better at equation solving than you used to be. So if I hear you correctly, Devin, you're saying this. 20 minus M2A equals tension. Tension is going to be 20 minus M2 was 2, A was 4, and holy smokes, what do we get as an answer? 12. We've just proved the tension is the same, but now that we know that, we don't need to prove it again. We'll always just try and pick whichever object has the least number of forces because it'll be an easier equation. Doesn't matter which one you pick, though. In fact, honestly, Ashley, on a test, I'd probably do both, and if I get the same answer for both, I know I'm right. I wouldn't do both right away. It's you know, Finish the test, go back, check your answers. Oh, I'll find tension using the other mass. Hey, I got the same answer. I know I'm right. Take the same diagram, but we're going to add a little pulley and hang it over a cliff. Connor, are you going to make it? I don't know where you were, but you weren't here. You going to make it? Yeah, okay, I am not. Okay. So if we have a hanging mass and no external force, then we need to understand that it's the weight, the mg, of the hanging mass that accelerates the system. So what are the forces acting here? Let's do the hanging one first. Get the obvious ones. Gravity, and I'm going to call this M2G. I'll call it mass 2 because I always go from left to right. Is this in free fall? Nope. So something's slowing it down. What? The string. Oh, what do we call that force? Tension. Is there a normal force? No, because it's not touching a surface. Normal forces only occur when you're touching a surface. I think that's it for this part. What are the forces acting over here? Get the obvious ones. M1G. What else? Normal force. What else? The rope. Tension. And Devin, this is where it gets when you're finished yawning kind of weird a little bit um, because the nice, this is vertical, these are horizontal, but it's really the forces along the rope. So I'm going to say, first of all, let's clue in. Is there any way that this can be moving to the left at all? If this is moving, it's because this thing's pulling it down and to the right. So my winner, right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk down the entire length of rope and any force that would end up pointing down is going to be winner. Any force that ends up pointing up is going to be loser. Winner. Oh, I ran into a force on the rope. Winner or loser? Loser minus. I ran into a force on the rope. Now, if I follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it, which way will it end up pointing, up or down? Winner. Have I done all of the forces that are parallel to the rope? Yep. Equals, Justin, how many masses? Two, uh, and we're looking at both of them because we've, we've done a force from this mass and this mass in this equation. Then we better have M1 plus M2 times A, or mass of both times A. I don't care which one you write. Some kids like M both because it's less writing. Some kids like M1 plus M2 because they can see what's going to be going there. Whatever. 
<sighs> I can feel the tension just leaving. What happens to the tension? Ah, it's like going to my happy place. Beach in Maui. Tension cancels. The notice will tension always cancel? Yep. Can we just not write it? Nope. I'll be fussy on that. Because I do want you to realize it's not that there's no tension. I used to let kids not write it, and then I found when I said, find the tension, there is no tension. No, there, there is. So we'll, for the minus T plus T crossing out, the one second that it takes I think is worth it. Alex, how would I get the A by itself? Yep. A is going to be M2G divided by M1 plus M2. It's going to be M24 times 9.8 divided by, I think I can add M1 plus M2 in my head, 6. You are allowed to use your calculator this time. Although, really, you shouldn't need to. That's 2 thirds. 9.8 times 2 is 19.6 divided by 3 is going to be 6 point 16 should track the 3 carry. Ah, I give up. I'm tired. What do you get? We wanted you to do it in your head, Mr. Duke. I'm sorry. I'm fighting the cold. Brain doesn't want to work. 4 times 9.8 divided by 6. 6.53. I should have been able to get that. Oh, how many sig figs are we going to here? Let's see. How many sig figs? Three. How many sig figs? Three. Now, this 9.8 is kind of a weird one. It's sort of an arbitrary number of sig figs because it's really 9.8. If you went two or three, I wouldn't freak out. But I usually go from the data that they give me. I don't include the constants in my sig fig calculation. So I'm going to say three. We're going to say the answer is 6.53 meters per second squared. So there is the acceleration. What else did they want me to find in this question? Sorry? No, they didn't want me to find. It said identify the net force. We did. There it is. We wrote our equation. Then find what, my friend? Acceleration, check. What else do they want me to find? Oh, tension. To find the tension, we don't look at both masses, because if you look at both masses, the tension's always going to cancel, which means we're not going to be able to find it. We're going to look at one mass. It doesn't matter which one, although one will probably be easier than the other one. Which mass would you like me to use? Mass one or mass two? I don't care. Pick, Alexis. You say mass 2, this one? Okay. Now, I am going to be saying to you in a second, I would have chosen this one. You'll see why in a second, but I want to show you you can get the same answer for both. So here's using mass 2. We're only looking at these guys now, looking at mass 2, looking only at the forces here. Who's winning? Okay, so it's going to be winner. Loser equals, and I'm only looking at one mass. Which mass did you say, Alexis? M2A. There's our force equation. There's our winner minus loser tug of war. Uh, once again, to get the T by itself, Alexis, do you mind if I go plus T over here, minus that over there? Can I do that one step? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to go tension equals, I think it's M2G minus M2A. Tension is going to be M24 times 9.8 minus 4 times 5, Mr. Do it, times 6.53. What's the tension? Don't all rush for your calculators at once or anything. Yes, I'm looking at you. Sorry? Oh, you already did it. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were sitting there like, my bad. 13.1? Anybody else? Yes? Okay. Alexis, here's why I would have chosen mass one, because I'm a lazy nerd. Ready? 
Look at mass one. Who's winning? Because it's accelerating to the right. Who's losing? Nothing. You would get tension. Whoop, let's try that again, Mr. Duick. You would get tension equals M1A. And you've already got tension by itself and a straight plug and chug. But either one is fine. And again, I think I said to you, to be honest, on a test when I was checking my answers, I would do both. Why not? Because it takes all of, when you get good at this, it, it'll take you about 15 seconds, maybe, maybe 30. So it's a pretty good. Oh, uh, mass one was, uh, what was mass one? Two. So if you go two times 6.53, oh, I can do this in my head. Two times six is 12. Two times 0.53 is one point Good gosh, Mr. Duick, 06, and you do get 13.1 newtons. Nice. Oh, it says to find tension, isolate one mass. Sorry, I forgot that it does that on the next page. So we did it right here because I couldn't see. So see above. Now for problems that involve friction, we can still use the same approach, but the tension calculations are a little bit tricky. We'll be doing this in physics 12 quite a lot. But I'll just show you as an example. You know, what about the door? No? I'm imagining things. If we had friction right here, all we would have is one more force in the loser direction. We would have one more force right there, loser, friction. Oh, and friction is what times what? U times a normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as a normal force. You get one more force. You got to do a, a three more buttons on your calculator. Easy to deal with, which is why I like this approach. So, here. The Atwood machine. Why is it called an Atwood machine? I don't know. It's just called that. I'm guessing a scientist whose last name was Atwood wrote a paper on it. The Atwood machine is a pulley system as seen below. So you have a pulley. Mass 2 makes it easier for a person or a motor to lift M1. How many of you have been on an elevator before? All of you? Every single elevator has a system where this is the elevator, and they have a counterweight that's the same mass as the elevator, so that when the elevator is empty, essentially it weighs almost nothing to move up and down because it's balanced. So that way, all the motor has to do, actually, is lift the weight of the people. The elevator itself is perfectly willing to move down or move up with a minimal amount of effort. Atwood machine. Elevators are great examples. Except, Brandon, the Atwood machine is mythical. This pulley here has no friction. Is that true in real life? No. These ropes here have no mass. Is that true in real life? No. Uh, this pulley here has no mass. Is that true in real life? No. But will it make our math easier here in high school? Yes. Otherwise, you need calculus because as this rope goes down, its mass is changing all the time because it gets heavier and heavier. And heavier. Ah, well, you're going to keep the math simple. Okay? So here's the first question. <coughs> Suppose I have equal masses on both sides of the Atwood machine. And then I lift one mass up. Then I let go. When I release it, how does the system move? A, it stays this way. B, the higher mass goes down. C, the higher mass goes higher. I want you to think about your answer. And then in about 10 seconds, I'm going to ask you to vote. And once again, how high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. I'm only picking because I know Mr. Duick will make fun of me if I don't pick. I kind of feel like I got a gut instinct. Ooh, I've thought this through and free bodied, and I'm sure. So you ready? Think about what you think your answer is. Who says A? A few of you. Who says B? Who says C? Okay. Convince me. Yeah.
This sounds like a job for a free body diagram. Let's prove it. Ready, Matt? What are the masses acting on mass one? Get the obvious ones. I'll call that mg. Is it falling? No. What's holding it up? Tension. What are the masses acting on mass two? Mr. Duke, you didn't call them mass one and mass two. That's because the question says they're identical masses, so why don't I just call them both mass, both mass and mass? Oh, uh, what's preventing this guy from falling? Tension. Let's do a free body diagram. Now, many of you felt that this was going to move higher, so you must have felt that this was the winner because this would move lower. So let's assume it's the winner. Winner. Winner or loser? Loser. Now, at first glance, you might think because this tension is pointing up, it's also a loser. But follow it around the pulley. And if you follow it around the pulley, which way will it end up pointing? Down. It's actually a winner. And at first glance, you might think that this gravity is actually a winner because it's down. But Dylan, follow it all the way around the pulley. And which way, when it gets to this side, will it actually end up pointing? Up. Loser. No, that force, not you. And we're looking at both masses. Look at the left-hand side. What does it work out to? Well, what happens to the tensions? What happens to the mass Gs, the MGs? Matt, you know what left-hand side works out to? In fact, we get this. 0 equals M both times A. How would I get the A by itself? You know what zero divided by anything is? In fact, you know what? I, can, I don't even need to go that. I can say, look, for this to be zero, one of these had to be zero because you're multiplying. Are the masses zero? No. What's zero? So if you're not accelerating, you ready? Who says A? Because you're not accelerating. It must remain at rest. There is no unbalanced force to cause this thing to move. And we've done a lovely little, it says, using principles of physics, explain your answer. I think we did a nice algebraic, ooh, no numbers, nerdy kind of a proof. But we said, you know, when we set up our free body, winner minus loser, we get nothing. Zero equals MA. Well, the M's aren't zero. Uh, it's got to be the A's. Look, watch. These are identical masses. Whoops, keeping it straight. Untangled. And this guy wanted to keep moving up, so keep moving down. Now there is some friction here, it's true, but trust me, it's quite happy to <clears throat> sorry. It's quite happy to stay down. It says in the diagram below, assume mass 2 is bigger than mass 1. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to throw some numbers on here. So, Jacob, make up a number for mass 2 in the teens somewhere. And how about, just to make this a bit fun, add a decimal. So we're going to go to 3 sig figs. Something point something, but in the teens somewhere. Give me a mass. 15.4. So we're going to put a little M2 equals 15.4 kilograms. Okay. And Connor, give me a mass for mass one, uh, somewhere between five and ten, but give it to me to uh, three, two decimal places, three sig figs, something point something something. Make one up. Seven point two three. That's an odd number. Why did you pick that? Oh, never mind. Okay. 
Let's label the forces acting on these masses. What are the forces acting on this guy? Get the obvious ones. I'll call that M1G because they labeled it M1. Is it in free fall? No. Tension. What are the forces acting on this guy? Get the obvious ones. M2G. Is it in free fall? No. Tension. Who's winning? Which way is this thing going to accelerate if it accelerates at all? I think M2 is going to move down because it's the heavier mass. So I'm going to let down on the right side be winner. Up on the right side is loser. And we're going to walk down the entire rope. You ready? Winner. Winner or loser? Loser. Now, again, at first glance, you might say, Cody, that this tension is a loser because it's pointing up. But follow it all the way around. When it gets to the right side, which way will it end up pointing? Winner. And which way will M1G end up pointing when it gets to the right side, Cody? Up, loser. Uh, the, the force, not you. Did we look at more than one mass? Did we list the forces from more than one mass? Then it's not going to be MA. It's going to be M1 plus M2, or the mass of both times A. By the way, part A says write the force equations. There's the force equation. What does part B say? Solve for? Accelerate? Okay. You know what? Hey, everybody. Tension is just canceled. You've all canceled tension. <sighs> you all feel more relaxed. Yes? Are you going to do the joke every time? Maybe. Um, let's see if we can, without rewriting this, uh, how would I get the A by itself, Shannon? Let's go straight to the final equation, then. I think A is going to be uh, M2G minus M1G all divided by M1 plus M2. And you think about how complicated a system this is, but actually, we get a pretty clean-looking equation. It's not really plug and chug. You gotta have to use brackets and things, but it's kind of close. This is why I like this tug of war approach, winner minus loser. Because we have stuff moving up and down in this question, to let up always be positive and down always be negative would give us yucky math. Uh, M2, 15.4 times 9.8 minus M1. 7.23 times 9.8 all over 15.4 plus 7.23. Just remember when you type this in, you'll have to put brackets there and there, there and there. But you can do it all in one fell swoop <coughs> if you've got a good calculator. Let's see, can I come up with an answer in my head? Well, that's about half of that, so it's going to be about 4.9. 0.3-ish? What do you get? 3.5? I'm at that bad off? Really? 3.54? Wow. 3.54 units map? Meters per second squared. Oh. Follow-up curveball questions. Now that you know how fast this guy is accelerating, or how fast this guy is accelerating, if I said after two seconds, could you figure out how far it had fallen? Well, let's see. VI would be zero. 
the final, I don't know, t is 2, d equals vit plus, oh, I could use d equals vit plus half a t squared and figure out how far this little system has moved in two seconds. Or I could figure out how fast it was moving after two seconds. Or So there's all sorts of, all of the previous stuff that we've done is now also fair game. Although usually we do that in physics 12. What does B want us to find? Oh, B is the, find the acceleration. Sorry, Mr. Duick. What does C want us to find? There was a C, wasn't there? Yes? No? Yes? Okay. What does C want us to find? Oh, it just says interpret the equation for the acceleration. Well, that's kind of boring. Um, you know what? We're going to add a part D. Find the tension. But I'm relaxed, Mr. Duke. I just got rid of tension. No, we're going to find it now. So, D. By the way, interpret the equation. Here's what it means. Did we get a positive answer here? then we guessed right on the winner. If we got a negative answer here, Shannon, you know what that means? You guessed the wrong winner. Actually, your loser was the winner. That, so it built in, there's an error check there too. Oh, negative answer, be nervous. Okay, let's find the tension. Which mass do you want to use? Justin, pick. Mass one or mass two, I don't care. Mass one? Okay. Why did you pick mass 1? Did you have a reason? Here's why Mr. Duick, lazy nerd, would have picked mass 1. Is tension the winner in mass 1? Then that means it's already going to be positive, which means it's going to be easier to get by itself. That, that's me being really lazy. It really... Oh. I mean, that's me being so lazy, I'm saying, I don't even want to have to write an extra minus, like that That lazy, okay? So looking only at mass one then, who's winning, Justin? Tension. Who's losing? M1G equals, and we're only looking at mass one, so it's going to be M1A. How would I get tension by itself? How would I get tension by itself, Justin? Yeah, that's the other reason I would have picked mass 1, because I would have also said, oh, and then the other one is negative. To plus it over, I don't have to worry about minusing. I'm better at, I make less dumb mistakes when I plus than when I minus. So, sure. Tension is going to be M1A plus M1G. It's going to be, what was mass 1? 7.23. We're still wondering why Connor picked that number. 3.54 plus 7.23. Kind of a weird number times 9.8. And Justin, if you're lucky, you still have this number as a decimal right on your calculator to all its extra digits, so you don't even need to, you can just go times 7.23 plus 7.23 times 9.8 if you're lucky. What's the tension? What'd you get, Sean? 96.4, because we want to go three sig figs. 96.4 newtons, anybody else? Well, I got one nodder, two nodders. Rest of you know? Seven point two three times six point five four plus seven point two three. I think you're right, times nine point eight. 96.4, I think is what I got. Or do you get or do you get 96.5 if you carry the original value? 96.4? Okay. Newtons. Nice extension. Two masses, three masses. Same approach, except it's now winner minus loser equals the mass of all of them times A. Carefully label your forces and then walk down the entire rope. Example 3 says find the acceleration of these systems. Example 4 says find the acceleration and the chord tension if 
M1 equals that and M2 equals that. I think what I'm going to do, because I've talked for a long time, i got a short class tomorrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here. I'm going to give you some homework to work on. Tomorrow I'll do this example and this example, and then the rest of the class will be finished the homework. So what's your homework number one? I think right now you can try number one, two, three, four, five is good. <coughs> By the way, look up at number four for a second. How many ropes? Two. Well, three counting this one, but two. You know how many tensions you're going to have? Two. I would call this tension one, tension one, tension two, tension two, and you'll end up having to solve for both of them. See if you can handle that one. Otherwise, I'll be willing to go over that either next class or on Tuesday. Number six. Now, you don't have to do this all tonight. This is what you're capable of doing now. And then I'm going to assign the rest of this tomorrow, but I'll give it to you now anyways if you want to try and get ahead of the game because you're busy Friday and Saturday or something like that. I'm going to be assigning number seven. I'm going to be assigning number eight. Why don't you just say all of them? Because I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember. Okay. So we'll pause there. If you can't get some of these, I'm going to say leave a big gap. Maybe tomorrow when I do the last couple, I might help you. Or I'll go over them a little later on tomorrow in class.